Let's now consider the decision-making process of whether to sell as is or process further. Um, what we are discussing is an example between that first um, little scenario with our data where we produced the um, items that were at a lower sales dollar per unit. Um, we had the cream and the liquid skim. Uh, those were the two products that were produced at the um, split off point. Those were separately identifiable. We could have sold them as is, as cream or liquid skim. But we also could have invested further, as seen in our later examples, and added some additional cost to our sales, processed them further, making buttercream and condensed milk from the cream and the liquid skim, and selling them at a higher dollar per unit. So, management needs to be able to analyze the information and decide which scenario would be better for the company. Um, earlier in the textbook, um, it's covered in chapter 11 uh, regarding relevant revenues and relevant cost. You guys have also been introduced to this in your principles of accounting courses as well as your cost class. Um, so we would need to utilize the relevant cost and the relevant revenues and make a decision. Now when we're talking about relevant cost and relevant revenues, relevant means that we would expect them to differ among the alternative courses of action. So are the revenues different in plan A and plan B. If they are different, then we would use those in our decision-making process. If they're not different, under incre incremental analysis, we can ignore them. The same holds true with cost. If our costs are different among our alternatives, A and B, then we would consider them. If they are not different, we would ignore them in our decision-making process. All right, so relevant costs, which are expected future costs that differ among alternative courses of action. If they differ, they're relevant. Revenues, the same holds true. These concepts can be applied to decisions on whether a joint product or main product should be sold at the split-off point or should it be processed further? In seller process further decisions, joint cost incurred up to the split off point are irrelevant. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Under A or B, those joint costs would have been incurred. And those joint costs are considered sunk cost. There's nothing we can go back and do in time to change those costs. Those costs up to the split off point are sunk. So joint products have been produced and a prospective decision must be made. Should we sell immediately at the split off point or should we process it further and sell later? Again, joint cost or sunk cost, we can ignore them. They are the same under either scenario, therefore they are not relevant. Don't assume, however, that all separable costs in a joint cost allocation are always incremental costs. This could get quite involved, but I am going to show you a fairly easy scenario here. Some of our separable costs may be fixed in nature. Separable costs need to be evaluated for relevance individually. So again, this could get quite involved. All right, so we're going to continue using the same dairy processing company information that we've seen thus far. We could either sell the items at the split off point as the cream and liquid skim, 
or we can invest additionally into it and sell them as the buttercream and condensed milk. So management needs to make a decision which one of those, plan A or plan B, is the most profitable for the company. All right, so again, using the same information, um, consider the fact that we have $400,000 worth of joint cost up to the split off point. That's great, but again, recall those are sunk. There's nothing we can do to go back and change the fact that those have been spent. It's the same under case A or case B, therefore we get to ignore them because they're not relevant. However, the additional processing cost past the split off point will come into play. All right, so $280,000 extra would have to be spent in order to process the cream into buttercream. And then we had 520,000 extra that would need to be spent for additional processing cost to turn the liquid skim into condensed milk. All right, so we have some additional cost that vary under the uh, plan A or plan B. Under plan A, no additional processing cost would have to be incurred. But under plan B, which would be to process further and sell as a different product, we would have additional cost to be incurred. What about the revenues? Do our revenues change between plan A and plan B? Sell as is at the split off point or plan B, process further and sell at a higher per unit. Yes, the, re the revenues are definitely different. The cream could be sold at $8 a gallon for X number of gallons. Butter cream could be sold at $25 a gallon, and there were definitely 20,000 gallons produced of butter cream. Uh, cream at the split off point was quite a bit less. Cream, we had actually produced only 25,000 gallons of cream. So 25,000 gallons at $8 a gallon. And then um, for the liquid skim scenario down here, part A and part B, the liquid skim, we had 75,000 gallons of it that we could sell for $4 a gallon at the split off point, or we could process it further, generating a mere 50,000 gallons, but being able to charge 22 gallon for that. So let's put this into an incremental analysis format. Again, many of you should recall how to do this, um, but I'm just gonna throw it out there like I've shown it to some of our um, under-level courses. All right, so let's break it down into what is the overall effect on operating income. All right, so to the far left, we have sell as is. If we sell it as is, we would have $200,000 in revenues for the cream product. However, if we process that cream further and generate it into the butter cream, we would be able to sell it for $500,000. All right, so doing plan B versus plan A, 500,000 in revenues is greater better than 200,000 in revenues. So that would change our operating income by a positive 300,000. Recall that the fixed cost, or excuse me, the joint cost are sunk. We're gonna ignore those, but the processing further is something that is relevant. If we sell as is, we have no processing further. But if we process further, we have an additional 280,000 in cost. I could actually have a zero here if I wanted to. 280,000 additional expense and cost. 280,000 is more expensive, not a good thing, compared to zero. So 280,000 more in cost and expense, of course, reduces operating income by that 280. So 280 more expensive than selling as is because there is no additional process further, 
reduces operating income by 280. We can do a net here and get 20,000 positive increases our operating income, which is a good thing. So under this, we would want to go with plan B, process further. Let's do the same thing for the liquid skim, plan A, versus condensed milk, plan B. Do we want to process further, yes or no? Under plan A, we had $4 a gallon times 75,000 gallons. We would have had a revenue of 300,000. But to process further, we would incur additional cost, 520,000, have only 50,000 gallons left, but be able to sell them for 22. So $22 a gallon times 50,000 gallons equals the 1.1 million. 1.1 million in revenues versus only 300,000 in revenues means this is way better by 800,000 when it comes to the effect on our operating income. In regards to our cost, again, ignore the sunk cost, those joint costs, but the process further part versus zero for process further under plan A do need to be compared. All right, so nothing in the cost here for relevant cost because there wouldn't be anything additional incurred past the split off point, but there would be 520,000 incurred to process further. 520,000 is more expensive by 520,000 compared to zero. That extra expense would drop operating income by 520,000. Therefore, what is our net? Plus 800 minus 520 means we would have an increase to operating income by $280,000. We would absolutely want to process further the uh, liquid skim into that condensed milk. We do have some other issues to be considered. Uh, make sure you guys have read the chapter. Um, there is, of course, a potential conflict between cost concepts used for decision making and the cost concepts used for evaluating the performance of managers. And this often arises when seller process further decisions are being made. Uh, sometimes we have those managers thinking about how they personally will be evaluated versus what is best for the company. And we will talk more about this in some of our other chapters. Firms should be wary of using the full cost of a joint product as the basis for making pricing decisions because again, we do have a potential lack of cause and effect relationship. 